on to the next segment here. We're pillars three and four. Mm. Pillar three, quoting you once again, to accomplish its primary duty of protecting individual liberty, the government must uphold national security. Close quote. Seems perfectly uh, straightforward. The government has a, a duty to protect me from you, to protect me from the government itself, and certainly to protect me from terrorist attacks from outside. Okay, now two quotations. Larry Arn, quote, promotion of democracy and defense of innocence abroad should be undertaken only in keeping with the national interest, pretty limited. George W. Bush in his second inaugural address, quote, the survival of liberty in our land increasingly depends on the success of liberty in other lands. The best hope for peace in our world is the expansion of freedom in all the world." Close quote. Larry Arn thinks George W. Bush was just overreaching there, or where do you, where do you want to place yourself? Where do you want to place a correct understanding on the spectrum of Ron Paul on the one hand and George W. Bush on the other? Well, um, first of all, Ron Paul makes an important error. He says we have 600 bases overseas. We have about 20 with any sizable number of troops and about mm -hmm. eight with a large number. If you count ambassadorial detachments, right. you know, so I don't agree with that. Right. That's a false. But I side with Winston Churchill and Thomas Jefferson. I side with what I just wrote. Jefferson said, we are the friends of liberty everywhere, custodians only of our own. And that's just a practical understanding, right? It's, you know, I pray that Iraq is going to be a free country, and I think there's a chance of it. And I give George Bush credit for that. I was skeptical. And God help us, I hope it happens. Right. But it's complicated. And you know, so a senior person in the White House said to me one time, don't you think they want it? And I said, sure they do. Have you read the Federalist Papers? And do you divine from that that that's enough? So the point is, it's hard to do that. And Hold our on. own Larry, strength Jefferson, is... Jeff, where does Jefferson's, where does the attack on the Tripoli pilot, pirates fit in? Well, they were thing? attacking our people and our shipping. Ah, okay, it was very limited. He, he, he sent the then very small United States Navy across to Africa to whip a small number of pi It was a limited operation. It wasn't attempting to establish a rule of democracy across what was then what, and, Cyrenaica. And, and look, look at, first of all, prudential things yes. are not subject to narrow rules in advance, right? That, that statement by him, you know, he was a particularly gifted individual, friends of liberty everywhere, custodians only of our own. Pretty good formulation. That's a brilliant guide, right? Now, do I think we did a good thing in Japan? Sure I do. Why? Because they did a terrible thing to us, and darned if we didn't go level the place, and there was an opportunity in that. C said it would have been a false economy not to. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that in every country where there's a threat to us, we won't be safe? until they're all democratic? The answer is probably that's true. But is making them democratic practicable and the most practical way to save, serve our security? Probably not. All right. Um, pillar four, quote, the restoration of a high standard of public morality is essential to the revival of constitutionalism. Now, you say public morality. So here's a test case. Forgive me for mentioning it in these august halls, but Bill Clinton did something improper in private and lied about it under oath and created no end of uproar. And his supporters always said, it's all a private matter. It has no bearing on his conduct as president. You all ought simply to forget about it and leave it alone. How do you deconstruct that incident in our national history? And what I'm getting, I don't, I'm not so much care. Who cares about Bill Clinton? God, thank goodness we can now say that about the man. Who cares? What I'm trying to get at is your distinction between public morality and morality per se. Well, public morality, by the way, is laws about morality. It's, you know, 
what we think is, you know, murder is a moral harm. But I, I mentioned that term nature earlier, the process of begetting and growth by which people come to be. How do kids grow up? Here's what you learn if you work in a college. They're 18, 19, 20, or 21 years old, except for our two 80-year-olds. And, and, you know, they're, the 80-year-olds, their parents are not calling. But the 18 and 19 and 21-year-olds, 20 and 21-year-olds, if I call their home, I say, this is Larry Arn, and everything's okay, even if it isn't, because they're worried if I call. Oh, I see. You see? Right. And the point is, if they were some other kind of creature, they wouldn't know who their children are. You see? Human beings were made for the family. Mm. We should uphold that. It's mm. hard to raise a kid, mm. you know, and it takes, takes a long time. So things like that. But then another thing is the government is so large now, and it does so much, that it's very difficult for a free people to keep track of it. And, and you know, there's just thousands of things going on right this minute, you know. It's, we're probably worse governed now significantly than we were when this interview started. And that's, and, and that's saying something, you know. So, so it, how can you keep up with it? And that means that when it's so big, and so big in relation to the rest of the society, I, I think these numbers are accurate. I think the gross domestic product of the United States is 15 trillion. And I think state, local, and federal spending is 6.7 trillion. Half, I think, would be 7.5 trillion. Right. So we're 800 billion away, and health care is coming. If it gets past that 7.5, it just means in money terms, the government is larger than the rest of the society. How can the rest of the society watch it? Of course, there's endless possibilities of corruption mm -hmm. in such a thing. So, so as a constitutional point, that's the kind of morality you're talking about. I, I get just, we haven't discussed this, but out of sheer curiosity, uh, morality in the culture at large. That, I mean uh, that too. The sort of garbage language in pop songs these days or the proliferation of porn on the internet. Does, does that degrades the people? Very much, yeah. It? And see, you know, like right at this college, we don't, we don't have politically correct crimes. You know, but we, you're supposed to be civil around here, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be foul. Mm -hmm. Straighten up, huh? Mm -hmm. And we don't have many problems because they've subscribed to that before they come. And that's a condition of good order and operation. You mentioned, I'm going to teach this afternoon. Right. If, if, you know, unless they have a bad day, which they do, they're going to have worked really hard for today. And I'm going to get there and they're going to know stuff. And I'm working, you know, I was sitting back there while you were talking to Paul, I'm trying to get ready for class. And I've been reading that book for 40 years. And what's that about? That means a bunch of people come together and make a common effort and it is successful because they're all working on it. That's a microcosm of constitutional rule. It's a miracle what can be achieved in a country if everyone is governing himself. And it is the, this, this simple thing, this is the most important pe thing for people to understand. Free people are not governed by rules. I can show you how that doesn't work in this college because we've tried. They're governed by goals. And then the rules are very broad. Tell the truth, don't cheat, take care of other people. You know, those are rules, mm -hmm. right? But if the rule is, you know, the rules on colleges from the federal government, I'm told that they number now more than 500 pages. And I was told once by our attorney, because I asked for them, we don't live under these rules because we don't get that money. I said, send me that, I'd like to read it. He said, you're not going to be able to read it. And I said, you know, I'm, what do you think I am, a lawyer? I'm a pretty smart guy, maybe I can. And no, he said, I can't read it. Mm. And see who gets powerful under a system right. like that? Right. He, the, Whoever has the power to interpret it, they can do whatever they want. Right. So th that's the point that I would like, I, I, you know, I hope, that the American people will come to understand that in America we're supposed to have a very powerful government and a great deal of government, but it is to be of a different character than the kind we have today. And that distinction is fundamental.